Great. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, everybody, for being with us here this afternoon. Um, obviously, with a heavy heart, uh, hearing about the tragedy at the University of Virginia. Um, and uh, I want to lift up our thoughts and prayers to all those families uh, that have been affected, Coach Elliott, and obviously the program. Um, you know, there's uh, obviously a very small fraternity and sorority that are in college football, and uh, a lot of young people we get to know in recruiting. And, uh, you know, it just, it's, it's devastating to hear that news. So, uh, you know, our hearts are broken for everybody uh, impacted by that and our thoughts and prayers are with them. Um, you know, looking uh, back at last week's game, I'll, I'll talk about our players of the game, changing gears. Uh, offensively was Charlie Schmidt. We think he's probably playing some of the best football of his career right now. And definitely the year, you know, does a lot for us up front, not only making our calls, but obviously also physically, uh, uh, in the execution defensively, uh, was Rod Hurd, very active all day, all over the place, had a really, really sp solid game. All three of our safeties we thought played really well. Adam Stage, kick game again, uh, two great kickoffs, a big field goal. Big playmaker was Malik Washington, uh, his six catches uh, with 97 yards, uh, tied for a career high, which he set against Nebraska. So it's pretty great to see Malik be able to do that. Big playmaker on defense was Devin Turner. DT's big fumble caused, uh, gave us a chance not only to get off the field, but potentially get some momentum uh, uh, defensively. And then Jake Arthurs, Jack Kennedy, and Joe DeHaan were our special or our offense, defense, and special teams practice players of the week. Those guys do a great job every week. They have their entire career, veteran guys that uh, just really thankful and appreciative of, of their hard work. Uh, you know, we obviously have some uh, teams doing awesome here. Uh, at NU that I'm really proud to be the, the colleague and, and uh, friend of a lot of these coaches and huge fan uh, as a Wildcat grad and, and obviously a part of the athletic department. But Tracy Fuchs and uh, our field hockey team with a huge shootout win. I had a chance to actually watch that from the Walter Athletic Center uh, yesterday, watch the end of it with a lot of our staff. So back to back final four appearances uh, for the first time in program history. That was uh, so fun to watch. And we wish them the best of luck uh, Friday at the and when they go out to Connecticut. Uh, Michael Moynihan's uh, great women's soccer team got the first round win and now into the round of 32. Uh, and then Jill Miller in our cross country program uh, earned a top two finish at the NCAA Midwest Regionals and uh, claimed an automatic berth to the NCAA championship for the first time in 20 years. Uh, my niece Mia uh, Mraz is a part of that team, so I'm really fired up for her in her first year and, and obviously her, her great teammates. So a lot of exciting things uh, going on here in the athletic department led by great coaches and great people. Uh, Going to have a huge challenge here on the road. Uh, I think Coach Brahms team is playing, you know, as well as they have all year. Uh, great comeback on Saturday. Um, you know, they, they it wasn't a huge deficit, but, you know, they outscored Illinois 24-10 down the stretch and a ton of yards and, you know, obviously – one of the best quarterbacks in the country, and Aiden O'Connell, he's just been so efficient throughout uh, his entire time there at, at, at Purdue. And, you know, Charlie Jones, we, we competed against a lot when he was at Iowa, and, but uh, he has 87 catches, uh, you know, for about 5 million yards and is having a great, great year and a great finish to his career. Uh, but uh, what jumps out really is the way their offensive line's playing. Uh, you know, they, they, they're really physical and doing a lot of things, I think, really, really well. Um, you know, and then the, the, the catch and, and plays that Payne Durham had at tight end, uh, especially last week, were spectacular. Uh, and then I, I've, I've, you know, just been really impressed with their defense. We've kind of followed Purdue a little bit in our cutups and uh, really physical up front. They did a really good job getting after the passer on Saturday. Really competitive group in the back end. They're going to challenge you in the entire back seven. Their backers are fitting really well. And then you know, they got explosive guys in the kick game that make it really challenging. And so they're playing with great momentum. They have a lot to play for, obviously. And, uh, you know, we it's our seniors' last opportunity on the road in the Big Ten. And, you know, we expect to put together a great week and, um, you know, hopefully go play our best game of the year down in West Lafayette. So that'll answer any and all questions that you may have. A reminder, if you have a question, please message Athletic Communications in the chat. First question for John Vogt. Yeah, hi, Coach. Uh, you mentioned Malik as a uh, big playmaker of the week. Huge game for him. It seems like he can produce no matter who's under center. Um, just what has he meant to the offense this year? How, how much of a huge boost has he been for you guys? Yeah, really consistent, John. You know, really proud of Malik. Uh, you know, young man, I think he's just improved every year. 
that, uh, you know, he's been a part of our program and he's done a really good job leading. And it's not easy to lead when you're going through adversity and challenging, you know, without getting wins and to see the way he's been consistent in his approach has been something that I know we're all very thankful for in our program and making big plays, making guys miss, making, you know, running through contact. I think of, of his yards on Saturday, I think like 40 of them or so were, you know, yards after contact. So, you know, having a really, really good year, really proud of him. Thank you. Louis Vacare. Hey Fitz, happy Monday. Um, Thanks, Louis, it's, you too. It's, it's time for some deep thoughts, okay? Because um, I'm trying to reconcile something here. So a, a quote you use a lot is, is Einstein's definition of insanity, right? Doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. So given your record the last couple of years, I would think changes are coming to get different results. But then a few weeks ago, you told us that, you know, the program's never been stronger. You just had six bad days or now nine bad days. So my question is, you know, do you feel the need to make drastic changes to turn things around right now, or will there be tweaks or do you think changes are not necessary at all? Yeah, I think that's a fair question. And I think it'll be something that I'll look into after the season. I think right now my focus is finishing the season uh, off number one for our seniors. Um, you know, I think that as a coach, your job is to do everything you can to help them go out the right way. And, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Obviously two games left. We got, you know, after practice this morning, we got nine days, you know, that are guaranteed or whatever it is together or, or whatever, 13, I don't excuse my math. I don't want to insult anybody in the econ department I took classes with, but um, you know, and I'll look at all those things. I go through, you know, a macro evaluation of everything. Um, I kind of do that uh, throughout the year. And then I do the same things micro wise, but yeah, we've got to be better across the board. It starts with me and um, you know, incredibly disappointed uh, in, in the outcome and in the results of our games. Uh, there's no question about that. And, you know, ultimately I'm the one who's responsible for that and to create that the positive change, get back to where we've been and competing for championships and, Win a bowl games, it, 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 that improvement, it's got to start with me. And that's been my focus as I've tried to go through and trying to push the right buttons motivationally, trying to make sure we're putting the right things together schematically, um, you know, here in, in, the, in, this, in, the, in the micro in this year uh, and each week, because each week is a little bit different. It's its own separate entity. It's its own season. You know, your roster is different because of injuries and, uh, you know, performances and, you know, just kind of where things are at. And then who you're playing, uh, you know, dictates some of that. But you know, some of those, you know, big picture things will be things that I'll look at, you know, after the season and, you know, do what I think we have to do to make sure we get our program back to where we all want it to be. Uh, and that's to be competing for championships and, and, and playing the way that we've we've played here during my time, which I'm very proud of, frankly. Uh, I'm very proud of the guys that I've had the privilege of coach and uh, the guys I've had the privilege of work with. And same thing with this group. I'm, I'm bitterly disappointed that we haven't been able to help them get the wins that we all want, but uh, absolutely love the group. They're a terrific group of young people that I think have an incredibly bright future. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you bet, thanks, thanks for the question. I understand it, appreciate it, respect it. Bradley Locker. Hey coach, we saw this morning that Tommy was selected to the senior bowl down in Mobile. Just wondering what your reaction was to that, maybe if you found out a little bit before and also kind of how you think it speaks to the quality of player and, and really person he is. Yeah, fired up, you know, really excited for him. Um, you know, it's one of those that uh, that he's definitely earned. You know, he's been a, a very consistent player, very consistent leader, uh, a guy that's got a ton of passion and, and want to uh, for this program and just really thankful for him. Yeah, I found out late last week. Uh, I, I talked to him yesterday. Uh, I didn't want to distract him. I think I got the information on Friday. Uh, so I didn't want to distract him before the game. But we had a great chat uh, last night and uh, just really – Really proud of him. Dave Ennett. Hey, Fitz. Uh, Mac Uline obviously had his first start cut short. What did you see when you looked at the tape as far as how he was playing? Because it looked like he was playing pretty well before um, the uh, targeting call. Yeah, very active, Mr. Cat. I thought Mac was very active in the game. I, I thought, uh, you know, he was put himself in position to make the plays that we were going to need our Mike backer to make against that offense. Um, and, you know, for his first, you know, real time starting a game and, but really, I mean, he's been out there before, but first real start and having to be the guy, I thought he prepared like he always does. He always prepares to be the starter, but it's a little bit different when you are. And um, thought he put a, together a great week last week and um, you know, was off to, a, I think a really, really good start. Um, you know, it's funny. I talked to him the, 
I don't know, maybe a series before, and he was really kind of upset with himself that he had missed a couple of tackles. And I just asked him, what, you know, what would you think? He's like, I got to run my, he was up really hard on himself. I go, great. You know, they're not pitching the ball, but it's, it's like playing an option team. You might end up with 25 tackles. So just stay positive and get after it, man, next series. So maybe I pumped him up too much, but you know, uh, yeah, the penalty of aggression, you, you never want to see. And there was no intent to injury. Just got to lower the strike zone. And, um, you know, I thought he played active and I thought he was physical. Thanks. You bet. A reminder, if you have a question, please message athletic communications in the chat. The next question for John Riker. Hey, coach. Appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today. Uh, this last three game stretch has had opponents with major Big Ten West implications on the line. And for your own team, aside from playing for the seniors, what do you feel like are the motivations and stakes your team is playing for? Well, John, we're pretty hungry for a win, buddy. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. I mean, if that doesn't motivate you, I'm not sure what does. You know, your your water tastes better and everything tastes better when you, when you win. So um, I, I think that's motivation enough, you know, and, um, you know, the guys have been preparing. I thought we started the game fast on Saturday. We got Stoned on fourth down, that ended up being a big stop in the game. I've, you know, when you look back and you and you watch certain elements of the game, um, you know, there were there's just some some plays that had an opportunity to swing some momentum up there. But I thought our guys came ready to play and uh, disappointed. But uh, you know, another huge opportunity and a team that you know we we uh, have a ton of respect for. Um, you know, we had a hard fought game last year, and then a couple of mistakes down the stretch cost us. So. Um, you know, Coach Brown's done a phenomenal job. They're very well coached in all three phases and very talented football team. Thank you. You bet, partner. Another one for Bradley. Coach, we saw some Wildcats go down on Saturday. And in the postgame presser, you said you might have more information uh, today. Just wondering if you do have any updates on those players, especially a quarterback. Yeah, I, I don't get my injury update after today's treatments until later on this afternoon. So I'm sorry for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, it's been a little bit of a issue this year. Uh, I think we got, nine, I don't know how many guys, I think it's ballpark around 15, 17, somewhere around there, quite a bit. I think 14 of those guys started in the two deep. So it's been, it's been challenging on those guys in particular. I mean, they're someone who's had a major injury in my career. I, it's, it's not easy mentally. It's not easy, you know, emotionally, it's obviously not easy physically. Um, but, um, you know, we, they're in great hands with our medical team and, uh, we're here to do everything we can to support, you know, those guys. And then it's on the flip side, it's somebody's opportunity that gets presented. And, you know, Dave was asking me about Mac Uline, you know, you never want to have that type of opportunity happen because somebody, you know, one of your brothers gets injured, but you know, you're all you can control is how you get prepared. And I expect guys, if their numbers called to get prepared the right way and go do everything they can to help us win. Another one for John Folk. Yeah, hi again, Coach. I also wanted to ask about, you mentioned Charlie Schmidt at the, in the opening statement. Can you speak about his progression, how he's developed into the level of play he's at right now? Yeah, you know, kind of like I mentioned about Malik, you know, experienced guy that's been really consistent uh, here over his time in the starting roles. You know, battled through a lot early in his career and then, you know, just stayed the course, kept developing physically, strength-wise, uh, and then, you know, got out there and got the got the experiences that he needed to be able to, I think, get confident in his game. And, and um, you know, he's on the exact same page as Kurt Anderson, um, you know, with what we're trying to do as far as calls and targets and all that stuff in the run game and the pass game. And then, you know, he's kind of one of those quiet leaders. You know, he's got a calming force that I think is really good with the offensive line. And same thing with the quarterbacks. He's just been so consistent. And um, I think that's what uh, – Beyond his personality, he's a funny guy and a fun guy to be around. I just think, you know, that's something I think we all respect about Charlie is just how consistent he's been. Thank you. You bet. 